Hi, this is Chris Pruitt, Account Executive for Delta Defense Service Provider of the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. To join the USCCA, go to uscca.com forward slash Christopher P. This is Meet the Pressers. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. This episode is brought to you by Saber Red, pepper spray and safety products for all Americans. Next level training, makers of CERT training products. Mantis, Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Firearms Owners Against Crime Institute for Legal, Legislative, and Educational Action. Meet the Pressers is also supported by other shows, companies, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Matt Mallory here, and I've got my awesome co-host, Clint Macro, and we're going to be talking about politics, political activism, faith, helping shooters shoot better, and all that fun jazz. And we've got an awesome guest today that's uh, making uh, good things happen in the industry. So, Clint, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce him for us? Why, thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Our special guest tonight, his name is Chris Pruitt. Chris is an educator. He's a man of faith. He's a, a snappy dresser, and he happens to be an account executive for Delta Defense, which is a service provider for the United States Concealed Carry Association. So, Chris, welcome to the show. I'm real happy to have you here, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm really excited about it. Cool. Well, before we get into the the meat and potatoes, why don't you just uh, you know ten thousand foot view tell about yourself and what got you into this industry? Yeah, absolutely. So as a kid, my dad never let me own a gun or play with guns or anything like that. He didn't even want a gun in the house, and I always just had this like yearn to learn. And over the course of time, I really found my home with firearms, and then went to college. Was in the inner city, so I got to experience firsthand what a like self-defense type situation is. Remember there was one time where I was getting ready to go to a college class. <laughs> there was literally a body on our front porch wow. and I was walking to class. It was late to class and I was so desensitized to it that I walked into the class and I was like, Hey, sorry, I'm late. There was a dead body on my front porch. And just like, they were like, why are you here? Wow. And that's when I quickly realized like, okay, if that guy's going to get shot in front of my house, what happens if the guy with the gun would have came in? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what started to lead me down the journey. Um, I was a sales guy from day one, a lot of mentors and went to a couple of sales tournaments, stuff of that nature. And then ultimately ended up falling into this position where it was, I get to do the best of both worlds. Nice. Now, how long have you been in this position then? Close to three years now. Okay, because I understand that you are often and quite most of the time the top guy in the country. Is that correct? Yeah, last year I finished the number one producer in the country. Um, large to do with that Maryland shall issue surge. Mm -hmm. They went to shall issue and then all of a sudden it was like I had classes left and right. I was driving 6,000 miles a month. Wow. And wow. said I actually did not set a company record. I lost to somebody in Chicago, Illinois in my best month ever. And that was the coolest thing ever because like I set the company record for the year, but I still don't hold the monthly one because it beat me by like 3000. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Yeah. That the, the, when, when shall issue Maryland certainly was, I always kind of affectionately referred to it as the wild west period, <laughs> but I think the thing that needs to be learned from that is when shall issue came and it happened and, you know, there were surges in all those states. It was just Americans seeking out the right that they wanted to exercise that the government otherwise was restricting them from doing so beforehand. Oh, absolutely. It yeah. was, you know, the Wild West is the great definition of it. Like I was talking to a couple of instructors. They said they were having 30, 40, 50 people registering per day. 
wow. yeah. for classes because before that it was like you had to show that you had a reason to own that and carry that firearm. So it was like you really had to own a business or special clearances or something. It was stupid. Yeah, I think I might have been one of the last. Uh, well, near the tail end of it, anyhow, I was one of the last to get a Maryland sh- uh, wear and carry permit as a non-resident. Although they don't really care that it's non-resident or not. It just it's just the wear and carry permit. But I man, I had to send just shy of blood samples. I sent tax records going back many years, and I've taught a lot of classes in Maryland. Uh, over the years. So I I gave them rosters that I redacted the names of the students, but I left the contact people on there and I made sure the contact folks would kind of vouch for it and uh, tax records, hotel things. And uh, they still even like made me jump through a few more hoops for it. And then shortly after that, the Bruin decision came out and then it was pretty easy to get there at least for a while. Yeah. But right now it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge in, in Maryland. Is that correct? Or is it just that the laws have changed and people are not seeking out getting the permit? Yeah, it's more so the secondary piece. So SB1 was introduced as of October 1. It will go into effect. We just had a legal seminar with a uh, company, Urban Defense, that we went to with an attorney speaking on it. And it was just like, you can't carry within 100 feet of like public areas unless if they give you express written commission. It's like, it sounds like New York. Realistic. Yeah, they're doing a lot like New York was. So like, if anywhere more yeah. than one person can congregate as a sensitive area or something ridiculous like that. God forbid but, you got a church service in your home. You can't do yeah. that either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and Massachusetts going through the same thing right now. There's a bill that's being proposed. Uh, yesterday, or it was yesterday or today, uh, Gun Owners Action League had a big a big rally up there in, in uh, Boston. I think it was in Boston, but near Boston. But yeah, what they're trying to do is just is just make it to where you can't carry anywhere. And it's it's kind of like a like a baby pounding its fist in the ground in, in so revolt true. to the, the SCOTUS decision. But what they know is going to happen is it's going to stop a bunch of people from exercising their right. And in the meantime, people. the pro-gun organizations are going to spend basically what I'll call a metric ton of money fighting it in the court. And they'll ultimately win in the court. I really believe that. But those kind of battles take a long time and take a lot of money. And then in the meantime, as they're pushing for everything over here, you know, we quote the gun, the gun industry will probably settle for something over here and we'll still lose ground. Yeah. And and yeah. that's, that's the problem. And that's, I, I don't know why a lot of people don't see that tactic. Cause that's the way it's been going for decades. Yeah. The biggest issue with SB one is the severability cause. So if you're, I guess the best way to say this is like, they basically put a piece in there that says if, any one piece of that legislation is to be an un- unconstitutional. The rest of the bill can still remain intact. So it's kind of like a, a, a line, nine, a, a line, line, line veto fight. of unconstitutionality or something. Correct. And even if you get the stuff mm. that's like bad out of there, still it bad. never completely alleviates SB1. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like we're dealing with here in New York. There's so many different facets of the uh, CCA, Concealed Carry Improvement. I call it atrocity, but it stands for ACT. Um, you know, they they just chipping away, trying to chip away at it. And, and thank God we just got the hearing from uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas just said, uh, I think yesterday, that he's going to hear it on October 6th. So hopefully the at least the ammunition portion, the background check that's been a disaster, hopefully that goes away fairly quickly. Well, we just need to have faith that the the balance of pro constitution power will remain on that side in the Supreme Court because you know the California magazine ban that just got overturned that's yep. going to get appealed. Ultimately, all that stuff is going to come to a head, and when it does, I hope that there's more people like Clarence Thomas on the on you know in the Supreme Court. Maybe we can see so see some st- things. Hope they don't stack it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know. Th- yeah, the the world the the future is a very strange thing, man. <laughs> very, very true. So, Chris, but, t- tell us uh, tell us how uh, you know how your how your day goes, your your geographical area. Yeah, uh, you know, how, give us kind of a little behind the scenes, behind the curtain look at your position at Delta and why you're yeah, so I mean, successful. It's a really cool job. I get to go from gun range to gun range or gun class to gun class and talk about guns and common sense all day. Um. <laughs> I usually hop in a car in the morning, especially on like Saturday, Sunday, like I leave at like five o'clock in the morning and I don't get home until like 930 at night, but it's very weekend heavy and weekday night heavy. So the best way I can describe it is I work when most people don't. 
<laughs> that's good i like yeah that. that makes sense totally yeah i guess saturday and sunday would be like the prime prime time because yeah, that's when i teach the most yeah well you're working with with folks that have a, a cadre at a range like you know call it a professional training training company and and like weekend warrior type guys and i say that i don't mean that to be derogatory but guys that maybe have a day job but they teach on the weekends at maybe the sportsman's club or as a as a secondary job so yeah no, you're feel, you're running the gamut and and a lot of the people i work with they want to get to the point where this is their full-time thing too mm -hmm. and i do have now a few people who have made that their whole living nice. which is really cool when you see people make that jump like one of my really good instructor sets um newcastle county her the wife was just able to recently retire so that she can put full time into the business because they have enough income coming in now. So we were able to work with some of their marketing tactics and stuff of that nature. So we can get them to the point where now she can leave her job and he's getting close to one of being able to leave his and do this full time too. You know what awesome. I, love, I love about that? I love how you said we're working. So it's like, that's not even technically your job, right? You're just doing it. Oh, it's, you care it's about a people true partnership. And yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Like the USCCA partnership is not like, hey, I'm Chris Pruitt. I'm your sales guy and I'm going to come in and talk to your students. No, like we take consultative perspectives and we help them with everything we see. So if I see, if I'm working with a big company and they're doing certain things and we're at a completely different geography where I know they can't compete, I'm going to help them build those same things up. Right. And I have a degree in digital marketing. So I'll help them with marketing. I'll help them find ways to get in front of the students. That's awesome. Yeah. I've, we I've want them to succeed some... as much as we want to. When they yeah. succeed, we succeed. That makes total and sense. That's where our team really focuses is like, let's help you get bigger. Let's help you follow your dream because everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to do great things, but nobody wants to do it by themselves. Or they don't know how to do it. So that's where. Yeah. That's where you can come in. You're, you're yeah, saying, Clint? I've, I've sat in some of the brainstorming sessions with Chris, and uh, you know he's he's definitely really switched on with the 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 internet marketing and social media. Uh, awesome. I've gotten some wonderful ideas off of listening to him. So we do all of what we do here. You know, Matt and I teach. Uh, we empower our fellow Americans to exercise that right. You do the same thing. You're an educator. Uh, mm -hmm. We all, in some degree, work as pro pro gun advocates. You know, Second Amendment advocates. And we do all of this to help protect our fellow Americans. And one of the things about the USCCA membership is it helps to protect our fellow Americans in many different ways. And, and I was hoping you could touch upon that and, and give a little more detail. Yeah, I mean, we take an approach that's going to be mental, physical, and legal preparation. And when we look at gun ownership, really what happens is most people focus on the physical part, right? Everybody wants to know how to smack a bang switch with their booger hook, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the simplest part of a gunfight, right? And every presentation I start, I ask the simple question, can you make the decision when it's a six foot seven, three, 400 pound man with a teardrop tattoo? And everybody's like, yeah, that one's easy. Now, okay, now what happens when a 13 year old kid puts a gun in my back? Good point. And that mentality switch is where people lack their focus. And the USCCA really takes an approach with the Protector Academy, which is the best way I can describe it is like the same way you would log into Netflix. You're logging into the same type of platform by going to the USCCA. You go online, you train five, 15, 30 minutes. Everything's built into short consumable episodes. So speak on that as far as both you coming to classes and speaking to the students, how that transpires as well as the protector academy and is that something that's given to any op official partner or is that uh different come with different tiers is it opened based on different yeah. tiers enlighten us a little on that or so the membership really is the insurance benefit as well as the online training the difference between the three member levels is how much training you get access to so I always recommend go at the top one. Nobody wants less training if they're put into an incident. You might as well get all the training done, right? Mm -hmm. All of the training, it's a wide plethora. So like everybody thinks like, oh, it says conceal carry in their name. That means it must be only guns. Well, like, no, we got things like emergency first aid fundamentals. 
And I always make the joke, if you're going to learn how to put holes in someone, there's a chance they may put a hole back in you and you might want to learn how to plug that, mm -hmm. right? You're way more likely to have to use medical assistance than you are to have to use a firearm in a critical incident. Yep. So why would we neglect those pieces? So it's really all encompassing where it's not just gun oriented. It's, you know, let's think in the right place. Let's avoid situations. Let's save our life, but also let's be able to help others. That's great. And that's really where the training is heavy focus is like being in the right mindset. Everything is mentality. If you're in, in high school and you missed a day of school and then you come in and they throw a pop quiz on your t desk you're not ready for anything on there. Your body enters tunnel vision, right? You're staring really hard at number one. Whereas like when you mentally prepare yourself for what that quiz is going to be or what, what you might need knowledge basis, why you're really able to be aware of everything on there. And people don't realize that not that you're going to avoid going into tunnel vision or some of these neurological pieces that go into it, but you can decrease the amount of time in which you experience it by being more mentally prepared. You're never going to fully fix that problem, but the more education you have, the more mastery you have of those fundamentals, the easier it is for you to apply it when you're actually in the incident. Absolutely. I mean, I've been a member of USCCA since 2013. I bought my first membership and, you know, the the product was much different then, but it was still a tremendous value that I invested my money with it. And of course, I'm very, very familiar with the material. I've been teaching the curriculum for many, many years. And I think it's important for people to understand, you know, the gun solves one problem. And if we use the gun, it's very likely it's going to open up other problems that we have to deal with, uh, you know, after the fact. And of course, if we're left with no other choice, then we need to deal with those, that immediate problem as efficiently as possible. But we need to be able to articulate what we did at that moment that it was reasonable to do so. And the training, what it does is it really helps to, you know, honestly, probably people are less likely to get into a situation because of the training. You know, maybe they keep their eyes open more, make better decisions, choose not to, you know, get into that argument and de-escalate because they understand the, the wax, the big ball of wax that they're eating into as far as the responsibility is concerned. But if they do need to, then they're better equipped to be able to, through their attorney, of course, articulate what they did was reasonable for the circumstances and they're less likely to be you know, put in jail. There's no guarantees in anything, but we definitely want to stack the deck in our favor. I like that you said, you know, no one only wants, no one wants to be half trained. So why not get all the training that you possibly can? Absolutely. Yeah. One of the and things I like is that the Protector Academy also then sends, sends people back to the, to the ranges and, and the partners that you work with to get mm -hmm. more in-person physical training too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I can watch Tiger Woods swing a golf club all day long. And you know what happens when I go to the golf course? I don't miss the 19 hole because I'm drinking all day. <laughs> right. I can't just pick up a club and swing like golf, like swing a golf swing like Tiger Woods just because I watched, watched a video. Yeah. Right. You totally. have to be able to actually go and apply it and work through those pieces. Now it's easier to pick up those pieces physically when you do have that mental backing, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you just can't do it. Yeah. The, the, some of the analogies that I'll use that you're, you're kind of hitting on, I just say it a little bit differently in that sense is, uh, you know, well, one, the trifecta of tools. So lethal, less lethal medical, it's more likely that you're, and I ask student, students in the class, how many of you been in a, a dangerous encounter where you could have used a, a gun to stop somebody from trying to cause death or great bodily harm to you? And like 99.9% .9 of the time, nobody puts their hand up. There's every, every once in a while, there's one, one or two students here or there. And the major majority of my tell them, I said, so, but you've been in an argument with somebody, right? And I'm, like, oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, what'd you do to defeat that? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I yelled at him. I used physical force. Maybe some people pepper sprayed somebody, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, so it's more likely that you're going to use a less lethal tool uh, in an unsavory encounter with another human being. So got to have the gun, better to have it, not need it, need it, and then or better to have it, not need it, than need it, and not have it. But those less lethal tools can be very beneficial to you too. And that trifecta, oh, that, that third one's the medical, which, you know, like you said, you know, you yeah. learn how to put holes in somebody, you better learn how to plug them up. What's up, guys? I'm John Keys from Guns Out TV, and this is Meet the Pressers. Meet the Pressers. Again, going back to the educational component, that was one of the things that I, I always felt was a huge benefit of the USCCA membership over other 
you know, we'll call it similar products, not that they're exactly the same, but was that it stressed education so much and that it gave, not only did it stress it, but it gave opportunities for education. And it took advantage of, of instructors, you know, years ago, we were affiliate instructors and, and, you know, and, and there's the official partner program now. And uh, the company's always worked well with educators. And I think that's a, a huge, huge benefit. Yeah. One one of my instructors, Mike Hughes, who came to one of your classes with PDN. Um, yeah. No, hold on. It's it's not Mike Hughes, the cert pistol guy. Okay. No, not the Mike Hughes. Guy. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I'm not that cool. <laughs> no, but Mike Mike Hughes, you're talking about is he's a he's a good dude, man. Very good. He's dude. a good dude. He's a TC, and one thing that he always says to his students, and I really like, is what do you have between a harsh word and a gunshot? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like that hits very heavy because everybody wants to make the gun the solution. And it's like the gun is a tool when people say, oh, like this weapon, this weapon, this, this right here is your weapon. Mm -hmm. Brain is your weapon. Everything else is a tool. I've seen so many people who like I could give them a can and they probably kill me way quicker than I could with, (laughs) with the gun. Right. It's because their brain knows how to make that happen. It's not about just the tool. So, and and that reminds me of something where uh, years ago I had a student of mine at a 7-Eleven and uh, he told me the story and it basically came down to him trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. He kept trying to come up with scenarios on how he could use the gun in the situation. Hmm. And this was probably 10 years ago. And, and I said to him, I go, well, what would you have done without a gun? And he goes, but I had a gun. And I go, but that's the problem. You're trying to figure out how to use the gun and you weren't justified in using the gun. I said, what else could you do? And that's when we started going through like less lethal and, you know, he could have yelled, you know, Hey, leave her alone. And the guy probably would have went, God, right. Anything. I mean, use your mind, like you said, and that, what would you do without a gun is something that I've used for my students. But then they're like, yeah, what would I? And they kind of get, they stop. They don't know that next step. They know they should probably do something other than a gun, but what? So that's where I came up with recently and I, coined the phrase the mvp of tools and you kind of alluded to it in, in the sense too mind you have a mind macgyver it come up with ways think of ways to try to in, you know ingenue ingenuitively get out of the situation use your voice you know verbalization which we talk about in depth in our training right with our students and then physical know how to use physical know how to you uh, you know control the head and uh, martial arts wrestling stuff like that because if it does get physical you want to be able to control yourself so that mvp mvp of tools has kind of been that you know progress from what would you do without a gun of course and then i would say the three best books to really help with that are like you have verbal judo yes a great book it is never split the difference by chris voss that's a great book um and violence of mine i think that one's varg freeborn yep that was great and those three books if you are going to be in a defensive mindset and you want to be actually prepared for what can happen like those three books in my opinion are a must right the last one is um violent but it's violence of mind and when violence is the answer and i think that's a tim larkin book yeah those books if you want to educate yourself and be prepared like you read those four you're going to be bounds and leaps of bond everybody else yeah yeah i didn't i haven't heard of the second one you mentioned but i've read the first one and the last two i've I've listened oh never split the difference by chris boss he's an fbi um negotiator i'm gonna write that he runs a phenomenal master class like it's one of the best books. It's all about like negotiation. And I think that's that big piece is disrupting OODA loops. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's where that's heavily focused on. Yeah, definitely. Breaking yeah. that. It, that was something you said earlier too, as far as the, uh, you know, being trained and being able to respond to that quicker. And and I call that you know, the delay in the decision-making process. Mm-hmm. All, all it is, is really just managing that adrenaline dump. The more training you have, the quicker you'll be able to manage that adrenaline dump and turn around with something that's in your neural pathway, something that, you know, that you've, you've trained enough where, where you have it in your amygdala, that your hippocampus, where you can just respond to it quickly and, and put it out there. And, and the analogy, driving down the road and a deer runs out in front of you, you don't go, oh, deer, where's where's that break again? You just hit the break because you've had enough training on doing that because of repetition. Oh, yeah, absolutely. repetition, but also r- repetition in context so that you can recognize the need to do the thing that you've done a bunch of times. True. You know, so the time delay is like, uh, I, well, uh, 
um, Tony Blauer has been on the show before and, you know, he talks, if you remember Matt, he says, okay, so you got a guy coming up beside you and you're at a cash machine. He pulls out a knife. What are you going to do? And he says, everyone would say, well, I'm going to move to the left so I can take control of the knife and counter. And he says, no, you're not. You're going to go, oh shit, this guy's got a knife. Oh crap. <laughs> He's actually going for the knife. Son of a bitch. He's going to stab me. That's, that's what goes through the head. Yep. And, and so having the recognition of knowing, oh, this is real. I need to act. So, you know, that's, that's what that time delay comes into place. Uh, when was this? This was about a year ago. I don't know if we talked about it in the show or not, but, um, uh, oh, Dave Spaulding did a, a, a little thing on Facebook and he typically doesn't write long things on Facebook, but, uh, he was talking about reloads. And of course he has a very specific way of teaching a reload and there's always controversy over which way is the best or whatever. And, you know, you can reload a gun probably about 10 different ways and, and safely. Well, his whole thing was, look, your reload versus my reload, you practice it, you can get fast with it. But it's knowing when to do the reload is when the, you'll get killed. You know, so his whole point was like, like I'd like to teach is people should run their gun to slide lock in training all the time. You know, I, I don't recommend you go to slide lock in a gunfight. If you have an opportunity to put a fresh mag in, then do that. Emergency. But in training, run the damn gun to slide lock so you know what it feels like. So you yes. can have a learn intuitive response to the stimulus slide lock and get the gun reloaded. So that recognition component on top of having the reps will help you to be able to negotiate those, that confusing world a, a little faster or you'll get it's to always that the little step a little quicker too. Yeah. It's always those little things too. Like even workspace. Like I see a lot of instructors who are like, put your workspace here. No. Like this screams attack me. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, your gun that's goes to slide lock. Like keep it pointed at your adversary. Well, I mean, in this, you're blocking your peripheral. You're sh you're aiming. I got this from Clint. You're you know you're shooting a baby Jesus. Not good. Yeah, no, no, don't point the gun at Jesus. No. <laughs> so I like that one. The, the uh, you know the that whole mindset. One of the things I'll say in my class too, it, I'll ask students. I go, who who here has never been punched in the face? And you know, so like you know, I'm like, I'm not going to punch you in the face. So don't worry about it. But you know, the, a couple of them raise their hands, and then other ones that have been punched in the face. And I'll say, so the, the, those of you that have been punched in the face, the first time you got punched in the face, you you were like, holy crap, that's what that feels like. Did you see them punch me in the face? Have you been punched in the face? That hurts, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're you're like you don't you have no no relatability to what that feels like. So you're oh, at yeah. at an awe. But then like an MMA fighter that gets punched in the face for a living is like, bam, boom, and they're right back at it because they have that response. They've, they've been through the education, the training and the practice portion of, you know, that whole training process. Well, the MMA fighter, MMA fighter yeah. knows what it looks like before someone punches them in the face. Mm. Yeah, they so see they're either ready for it or they move. Yeah. And it, again, this is the training and context thing. And that's, that's what a lot of the USCCA material does that helps to, have them train in as much context as you can simulate on a square range or in a video or some type of like scenario based interactive uh, thing like that. But yeah, the, the protector Academy has got a lot of stuff in there. And again, it directs people back to instructors to have them do in-person training. That's so great. the mentality, the man, there was a uh, study, a, ha a Harvard law study on the mental pieces of application. They had three groups. One was people who were taking foul shots every single day for three weeks or six weeks or something like that. And then they had a group where they went home and for 15 minutes a day, just pictured that they were making mm -hmm. that. And then they also had people who like did nothing, right? As their whatever group, right? That The do nothing group. Yeah. <laughs> the placebo. Is that what that was what That's you call what that? Is. Yeah, the yeah, placebo. placebo. Yeah. And they actually found that the people who actually physically did it and the people who mentally pictured themselves, there was like a 2% difference. Wow. So like yeah. picturing it in your head and actually running it in your brain, running those scenarios and making those decisions, your brain is so powerful that like it can desensitize you almost instantaneously. Well, not to mention the, the the training value you can get through visualizing and watching videos or reading something. If you've already once experienced it, then you've got tremendous value in seeing someone else do it or or seeing a video of it. As a matter of fact, I quoted some statistics in that uh, the last article I did for Personal Defense Network on visualization. And yeah, there's a tremendous, tremendous training power in that. And and you can do things with visualization that you can't do live fire or for real because you just can't. You, you know, know so... 
yeah, there's some value there. Yeah. And, and both of you, some, something that kind of brings us together in the sense that I'll tell my students is watch news. We all hate the news. It's, it's bad. It's ho-hum. It's, it's bad stuff going on. But, you know, when you watch the news and you see something that's happening, you put yourself in the mindset of, oh, wow, that happened to that person. That could happen to me. And you start visualizing, what would I do in that situation? You know, well, oh, shoot, I'm not going to do what they did because it didn't work. They're in the hospital or in the morgue. But that person survived. And then you start looking in and you start adding to your toolbox possible ways to get out of something like that. And then if something like that happens, you're a little bit more educated, prepared for it, mentally stable on it's really happening. And it's not like, oh, my gosh, this is happening to me. Not it's, only that, it's bad. People are, yeah, people are very surprised at how educated criminals are, too. Oh, like we were watching a video in Philadelphia guy came in the rob a shop he literally finger off the trigger pointed a safe direction israeli carry while the guy's actually it's like you don't know how trained you need be on your worst day yeah so why would you limit yourself like yeah. what happens if it was like a former you know dude who's just like an assassin yeah and he just went off the rocker and you in the wrong place in the wrong time and that's your adversary spot on prepare for that day yeah i'll I think say tim kennedy's Tim Kennedy's quote was like, we prepare, we, we train the way we do so we can destroy those on our worst day on their best or something of that nature. Yeah. I always say like my, I'm, I don't care how Billy badass you think I am. I can be beat. Anybody can be beat on my bad day. If a, ba a bad guy has a good day, I'm done. Look at Chris Kyle. Right. Mm -hmm. I just lost a friend because of that. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a really good friend, EP guy. You know, very, very trained. One of the best groupings I've ever seen in my life. Like, dude's just phenomenal behind a gun. And I think it was like two months ago, guy came in, eight shots. There's hmm. nothing he could do. Like, there was nothing in any way, shape, or form he could have done to save his life. Like, he was found trying to get into his car to drive himself to the hospital. Wow. That's horrible. Hey, I, I, don't, I don't mean to, to sound ignorant. What's EP mean? Executive, uh, executive protection. protection. Oh, executive protection. Oh, of course. Sorry. Uh, not ED. Okay, no, no he, was, he was thinking ED. Yeah. Yeah. That's you take a pill for that. Yeah. Yeah. The red one or blue. the blue one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never take the blue one. No. I got to watch so, that movie again. There's so many references to that. Yeah. Yeah. So here we're talking about all the, the physical stuff here. And, and you know, if we're left with no other choice but to use the gun because fear of death or going to jail, secondary in our mind, and the necessity of using that tool to defend ourselves against an attack we didn't start and we couldn't get away from, the likelihood of us being charged, having to come up with a ton of money to pay for a lawyer and have to live in that legal system is almost guaranteed. I mean, there's no guarantees in life, but if you use the gun to defend yourself, it's almost guaranteed you're going to have to at least put your foot into that water. Yeah. What, what are some of the things that the USCCA membership helps someone with if that were to take place? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's always important to note that like we focus so much on training because like we want you to avoid it all together at all costs. Mm -hmm. Right. And then training also helps you save your life, God forbid. And then also the training gives you documentation because courts are more about what you actually like can prove, not necessarily what you do. So mm -hmm. having that documentation or training can definitely help. Now, when we talk about insurance benefit in particular, as a US, uh, uh, sorry, can't speak. As a USCCA member, everyone becomes a additional insured in the self-defense liability insurance policies. Ugh. I'm like hearing myself again, and it's just like throwing me off a hair. Um, as a USCCA member, you become an additional insured in the self-defense liability insurance, uh, insurance policy issued to the USCCA, basically meaning that like it's more like an umbrella policy, right? that's covering the entire organization. You don't have to worry about deductibles. And if something happens, like the membership cost does not change, which is pretty cool. When we look at coverage limits, $2 million annually for damages if they're awarded in civil court. So like I press a trigger, if somebody sues me, they win or something of that nature, that $2 million pays the damages on my behalf. There's no limit to defense expenses, both civil and criminal court. So that's attorneys, expert witness, private investigator. And we always talk about the attorney perspective, but like expert witnesses are very important. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that gets neglected a lot. 
right? Like Masad Ayub is obviously world renowned, but like that's who I would absolutely want. And I mean, I'm good behind a gun, but I don't think I'm ever going to pass this Mag 40 class. <laughs> so that's probably that's why I'm a USCCA member is because like if I need somebody like that caliber, like I want them to be able to help me in court. And yeah, then there's a hundred thousand dollars for cost of bail expense if you're put into the incident million dollars is now your bail typical bail is or bond is 10 percent. that's where that hundred thousand is applicable i'm grant schmidt with shot tech llc and this is meet the pressers with clint macro and matt mallory meet the pressers yeah i, I was talking to one of the uh network attorneys in in pennsylvania of course uh correct me if I'm wrong, but USCCA will pay for whatever attorney you want. But of course they vetted and have kind of a network of really kick-ass attorneys in the area. If you don't have someone that you want to use. And oh, I was, I was talking to one of the guys and he had, was doing a case for USCCA and he wanted Masad Ayub for, to do a report and it was terribly expensive. And they said, great, where do we send the check? And he said, he's never once had to like, plead for money or anything like that. Like, I think one of the reasons I, I love the USCC membership is I want the best damn guy. I want the most expensive guy and I don't want to have to nickel and dime my defense or, you know, sell my house off to pay for it either. And so I've, I've talked to a lot of the attorneys uh, over the years, uh, you know, through my travels and they've all kind of echoed that same sentiment, you know, when it's their time at bat, whatever they need to help that member, uh, the USCCA has come through with flying colors. Has that been a, your experience as well? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, kind of that point that you're saying is like, you want the absolute best of the best. In that book that I was talking about with Varg Freeborn, one of the quotes, and it's actually one of my favorite like quotes, he says, you only have the rights that you have enough money to hire an attorney to defend not all of your rights are actually God given, right? You got to have enough money to afford an attorney that can fight those on your behalf. And that's where we don't really look in that context nearly enough. And like, I always hear people say, they're like, well, what's the average retainer? What's the average retainer? I'm like, do you want an average attorney? <laughs> mm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a real good point. Oh, yeah. defender, and you have choice that... of attorney as part of this too. So like, you don't have to use somebody on their, their list of the mm -hmm. attorney network. Like nice. you're not forced to, but they've done the vetting process enough that like me personally, doesn't matter if I'm ever put into an incident, I'm just saying, get me the best attorney license in the state. And I trust the USCCA has done a good enough vetting process. Cause like I haven't vetted 1200 attorneys, right? They actually have. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, they've done a good job vetting you because you are it definitely sounds like the best of the best. So on that note, how can uh, people find out more about you and uh, and follow you, stalk you, all that kind of fun stuff? Oh, absolutely. Um, so obviously you can go to the USCCA website. Um, if you go to uscca.com forward slash Christopher P, if you register for membership, that goes directly, you know, where you can register and, and I do get credit for that. Um, if you have any questions or something like that, like, Obviously, our team is more than welcome to help you as part of that process. Um, not that it's very difficult to find anybody's phone number now and day. Um, my phone number is 484-832-0031. It's my personal cell. I answer phone calls all the time. I've gotten phone calls at three o'clock in the morning and they're like, oh my gosh, like I just got into an incident. I'm like, don't tell me that. <laughs> um, there's another number for that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there is. They have a number on the back of your membership card. Yeah. And they tell you what to say. <laughs> but I'm okay with answering phone calls because like I want to help people. I want people to have that consultative piece. I want them to like know what membership actually is right for them. The only way to do that is me actually getting understand what your intentions are. Hmm. Like if you're somebody who's like, oh, I only want home defense, or like I don't like I want home defense, but I don't even want to own a gun. Okay, there's certain courses I'm going to recommend you go through and certain member levels I recommend you go through, right? Not everything is the reason that there is wide variety of options is simply because not everything fits everybody perfect. There has to be other options in order for you to be able to figure out what's right for you.
And the only way to do that is by having those conversations. Yeah, right. it's kind of like Matt, Matt or I, if, if we were to just say someone, some guy I don't know, hey, tell me what gun to get. Well, I think you should get this. That would be a really bullshit thing for me to say. Yeah. Now yeah. I need to know more about you. And then, you know, I could certainly say, well, generally I recommend this, but I got to know more about you, particularly your thing, your lifestyle, your Kung Fu before I make a definitive recommendation. So that's, that's very astute. They yeah. ask me, I'm just going to point, I'm just going to say that gun right there. Yeah. You, you need a big 4570 revolver with a giant scope on it. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> that. Super. But yeah. It's, it's one of those things like, we want to help people. And like, I always hated sales because sales, like somebody's always, it feels like somebody's trying to force you into something. Yeah. The best advice I was giving is if you want to sell, help people buy what they want. Hmm. Right. Yeah. People love buying things. They hate to be sold. Yeah, totally. So why are we going in and being like, you need this, you need it. No, like, let me talk to you. Let me understand. I'll make recommendations. You don't have to listen to me, right? We're all product of our own decisions, Yeah. but I want to have enough information to recommend something to you that actually makes sense. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on and giving us a little behind the, behind the curtain interview. Of course. Appreciate that. Yeah. It's always a pleasure, dude. Always a pleasure to oh, work with you. Always. I, I had I the opportunity. Chris, Chris was in an instructor development class I taught once and, uh, very cool. Uh, he, he did a fantastic job. Has a, a great command of the material, and 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 definitely, I I believe that he truly wants to help people, and that's why he's in this industry. So that's why if he's anyone good at has it. any questions about the about the membership, by all means, reach out to Chris and and learn more about it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Stay yeah. safe. There's a lot of sponsors to make this show possible, like Mantis. Make sure you check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Saber Red, pepper spray and safety products for all Americans. Next Level Training, makers of CERT training products. Mantis, Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Firearms Owners Against Crime, Institute for Legal, Legislative, and Educational Action. Meet the Pressers is also supported by other shows, companies, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening to our show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. Click that little bell thingy so you know when the next episode's uploaded. Support us on Patreon. Come to one of our classes. Host us to come to you and do one of our classes at your location. And until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.